How can you separate a value out into two separate values? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So let's take an example. I have, if I just declare, a field here. And I'm going to say that field is an integer and it contains the value 202306. So let's say that the first four characters represent the year and the next or last two characters represent the month. How can I separate those out? Well, I can do field and this little at symbol, that just means it's a variable I'm creating. If, however, you've got a table, you wouldn't be using that at sign. So this is just the name of the column. So field divided by 100. So this is the first part. So let's run that. And you might be expecting, hang on, isn't the answer 2023.06? And you might be surprised, therefore, to see the answer, no, it's 2023. So why is that? Well, the reason is because this field is an int. So just like the others, like small int, tiny int, big int, it can only hold numbers which do not have a fractional part. So if I try to say that this is 2023.06.01, well, it can't retain the dot .01 because it's an int. So therefore we have an int divided by another int. And in SQL Server Logic, that equals an int. So this is something to be very wary of if you're trying to say what is three divided by two. The answer to that is one. It's not 1.5 because we have an int divided by an int. For that to be 1.5, we'd have to do something else, an int divided by. The second one is now no longer an int. So what we have here is an int divided by a decimal. And an int divided by a decimal is a decimal. It's not necessarily of the same precision and scale of this decimal, but it is a decimal. So if I just select that, you can see it is 1.5 and we have got these six decimal places. If I said four divided by three, then this shows how useful all of those additional decimal places are. So that's the reason why I have the answer 2023 and not 2023.0601. Right, so that gets me the first four. Because I'm divided by 100, I'm removing two places. So how do I get the last two places? And what I can do is say, well, what's the remainder? So this is what happens when you divide by 100 and get a number with no fractional part. If, however, I want the remainder, then I can use the percentage sign. So this gives me the second part. Now this percentage sign is used elsewhere in a WHERE clause, where a particular field like, and then I have a percentage sign. However, it's nothing to do with that wild card. What this does is it does the division, but instead of giving me the answer, it gives me what's left over. So what's left over when you divide 2023 or six by 100, you get six. Right, so now let's just change this slightly. So I'm going to just copy this and make one change. And that change is that this is going to be a decimal. So it can have up to eight digits and two decimal places. Now notice that I've not actually changed the end value. The end value is still 2023 or six. I could put two decimal places afterwards, it would allow me that. Am I going to get the same values? So am I going to get 2023 and six? And the answer is, no, I'm not. Because we no longer have an int divided by an int, we now have a decimal divided by an int. And as we saw when we divided four by three, that does not give you an int if it's four by 3.0. So if you have a decimal, it will give me a decimal answer. And it doesn't matter whether the decimal is the first or the second, the denominator or the numerator, it doesn't matter which way around 
the decimal is, they could both be decimals and we'll get a decimal answer. So how can I get 2023 and not 2023.06? Well, there are a number of ways around this. The easiest way is to convert this into an int. So if I convert this field, which is currently a decimal, into an int, then the end result is going to be an int. And then we're dividing up by another int. So let's see what we got. We now have 2023. Now, another way of doing this is to put the bracket not here, but here. So what happens now is that we've got the decimal 2023.06 divided by 100. Well, that gives me 2023.06, and then we convert it into an integer. So converting 2023.06 into an integer gives me 2023. So that is another way. So do be careful. The answer may be different depending on whether you've got an int or a decimal. Now, what if you had a varchar? So I will do exactly the same thing, but we have this as a varchar. And so this is a string. Well, usually with strings, you would use string manipulation. So I want to extract one, two, three, four, and I'll start at position one. So I can say select substring, give me my expression. I want to start at position number one, and I want four characters. So that gives me my first part. So what do I write for my second? Do I write, well, what are the two numbers? Is it five, six, because I want to go from position five to position six? Well, that would work in this particular case, but do be careful. Let me show you what the answer is. And here we get zero six. But let's just add a few more characters. And we can see why this isn't actually going to work as well as you might wish. Because it doesn't give us from five to six, it gives us starting at position five and then going forward six characters in total. So really I want from position five and go forward two characters. So let's have a look at that. And there we have our answer. Now question, can I use what we've done previously with int with strings? And the answer is, yes, I can. As long as the field that I've got here is a number or can be converted implicitly into a number. So if you can't, it says conversion failed when trying to convert a particular varchar field to an int. However, if I use a numerical operator, so division, for instance, then it will convert or try to convert any strings into a numerical equivalent. Notice it doesn't do this the other way around. So we have got here a varchar and an int. Because this is a number, then this string gets converted into something like an int. Similarly, can I do this with a varchar 10? And the answer is, yes, I can. Again, it converts this field, which is a varchar, into something that is numerical because we've got a numerical division, and then it converts it further into an int if it were needed. Can we do this if we're around? So can I say select substring using this int? So this is a string function using a number field or column. And the answer is, no, I can't. I cannot introduce an int as this first argument in substring does not work. And similarly, if I try this with a decimal, 8,2, again, we'll see that it does not work. Now, there's one final conversion you might want to do. You might be separating this out because you want a date. So this is the year, this is the month, 
and let's choose the first day of that month. Well, I can do that using the function date from parts. And you can see there are three arguments, year, month, day. So what I can do is I can take the year from here and the month from here and add in the number one for the day. So this is my date answer. So if I run this, we can see we've got the date answer in a date format. Similarly, I can do exactly the same thing using the numerical operators. Because I can extract it in the first place, I can use it here. So let's run this. And we can see we now have both date fields shown. Well, I hope this was interesting. If I can help you any further, then I hope you consider looking at my Udemy videos. So these courses teach SQL, and it depends how much time you've got. If you've got one hour, then please join me for SQL Servo Essentials, where we have a look at the six principal clauses of the SELECT statement. If you've got a bit longer, then please join me for my database fundamentals, where in nine hours, we also have a look at inserting, updating and deleting data, creating backups, restoring data, joining tables together, and much more. But speaking of much more, if you've got a really long time, then please join me in my querying Microsoft SQL Server, where in over 29 hours, we have a look at much, much more. If you like this video, then please click the like button. And why not click subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.